right, today is May 19th, 2010. We're going to be reviewing the Mil-Spec Plastics Cobra Cuffs. Uh, these are military and law enforcement only. These were sent to us to trial to see if we could uh, bust out of them using the techniques we've shown thus far. We're going to be demoing these from the front, the traditional brake method. These are obviously in the instructions it says to place the restraints behind the subject, but if you can't break them from the front, you're not going to be able to, most likely not going to be able to break them from the back. So we're going to place them in the front here and I'm going to give this a shot, hopefully without breaking my wrists. And then there's a supplemental locking device. Let me show that real quick. Right there. Make sure those are pushed in real quick. Yeah, they are. All right, so that's a secondary restraint or lock. Comes up there. Alright, so I'm going to attempt to do this from the front. These are now secured and tight. So here we go. Yeah, it looks like that secondary restraint pulled in even further after I tried the momentum technique to try to get these off. So uh, that's a unsuccessful attempt, number one. And realistically, these probably aren't tightened all the way because there's still a lot of play in here. So uh, maybe we'll try this again, tighten them all the way, and uh, be right back. With the Cobra Cuffs, no spec plastics. Um, first test was unsuccessful. We're going to try to tighten these as much as we can first. There was a little bit of a gap in between those cuffs, so we're going to try the front technique again using that. If we're unsuccessful with that attempt, I'm going to uh, resort to the friction saw method with uh, the paracord in my shoelaces. So let's go ahead and put these on. Again, these are secured. They come with a rubber band just like so. So you just pull that rubber band off, flip these out. Secondary restraint locked in. Verified, not as much play this time. Alright, here we go. <sighs> okay, that was unsuccessful. Pull the camera down, just aim down at my shoes and try the friction saw.
harder getting through that big opening. <laughs> So again, obviously these are supposed to be on the back of the subject, but something I've just been thinking of while we've been doing this is that, um, you know, what would happen if, hang on a second. That took a while, but it did burn through them. Although I'm uh, <laughs> still together, so uh, it didn't really help me out much. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I can still do something else now and try to get out of these, but or I could just loop this back in again and. like that. Definitely a bit uh, more challenging than traditional zip ties, that's for sure. But my thought earlier was that when they're loose like that, like when you first put them on me, that first iteration, they were loose enough to where even if they were behind my back, I probably could have loosened up my hands to turn my wrists, you know, and come back around to the front, which would give me the option to do that. So. Well, something uh, I noticed applying them to your wrist also is, uh, this is a pain in the ass. You saw how much time it oh, took to get them on and tighten them up. I mean, yeah. they're, they're effective, no doubt. They're better than, oh, sure, sir, than sir. zip ties. They, they definitely yep. do the job, but as far as application goes, it, it took a lot longer to get those on than traditional zip ties. Well, one thing I've been thinking, too, is that, I mean, you saw what, a, what I had to do to even get the paracord around these things. And I had to hold them in just the right position because I was burning my wrists really bad. So. You know, I think they're pretty successful. I mean, the, the, you saw the time it took just to get all that done versus traditional zip ties. So you can zoom in on that. Show these cut. But, uh, so that's round two. We'll give this a shot. Uh, possibly behind the back. Maybe tighten them the way they were first and see if we can even get them around to the front. Yeah. 
All right, back for number three. All right, so these are some heavy-duty zip ties, uh, a little bit larger than the ones we've shown on ITS before. Uh, Mill Spec Plastic sent these over for us to just kind of take a look at. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw one of these on my wrist. Hopefully uh, <laughs> I don't mess myself up anymore. Put that on. We'll see how easy it is to break out of these things. Obviously, uh, these are a lot stronger than the uh, the other ones because I am not able to break these things. One more shot. Oh, nope. <laughs> Is this still wrong? Yeah. All right. Take a look at that. See if you can zoom in on my hands there. Right there. So that is uh, drawing some blood from the surface from those. And uh, looks like I got cut a little bit back here too. So uh, no messing around. Those things are pretty sturdy. So that was, uh, those were the heavier duty zip ties. I'm going to grab this again. Yeah. We had to cut this one off. But, uh, as you can see, the locking mechanism on these is very tight. So even even just depressing this thing is a lot sturdier than normal zip ties. And so this casing is definitely thick too. So anyhow, just some notes on these. We'll uh, come right back with the other way of trying to get out of these things. All right, so uh, this is one more test with these. We're going to give somebody else a shot with these. All right. Here, try moving this. Grab this with your teeth and try to move that restraint locking bar right in the middle. Pretty good. Um, <laughs> one thing we've managed to do is list up. Yeah, Draw some bullet too. Uh, nah, well, a little bit surface. Yeah. So anyhow, <laughs> yeah, I gotta hand it to uh, Mill Spec Plastics on these. These are definitely uh, heavy duty. But now again, that's just the uh, traditional method breaking from the front. Um, I feel more than certain that there's no way that these wouldn't be defeated with a friction saw with paracord, just like the other ones were. But uh, but uh, that's it. Yeah, I mean, I mean if you, they're, they're not breaking out. Yeah, if you can't break these from the front method like that, there's no way you're going to get them from the back either. Okay, let me uh, I'm going to put this together and give this shim a try on here, just to see if these can be shimmed. Well, obviously, I'm not trying to shim these on me. But I wanted to try it without being on my hands first. It's 
pretty difficult to even wedge this shim in here. Wow. So even pulling up on these, getting the shim in and Well, I got it, but that definitely took some time. Those teeth are pretty solid, too. But anyhow, you can see, even when I do this again, even bending this up like that creates some room to get that shim in. But it doesn't do much for you even when you have it in. There's just not a lot of Yeah. There's just not a lot of play in there at all. And if it's this hard to do without them being on wrist, I'd say that's gonna be near impossible to do. Even like this. Yeah, I'd say that uh, shimming is probably going to be very unsuccessful on these.